everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope that everyone is staying safe and sound in this pandemic and I hope that everyone is ready to learn something new today. But first, if you like what you see, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Hit that bell notification so you'll know my videos come out generally between 3 and 4. This is a family friendly channel so that's why I put it between 3 and 4 so adults and children can both watch. And please subscribe to my channel. Remember, we had a winner on my first promo when I got to 100 subscribers. I will be doing, I'm doing another promo now where I will be giving a random subscriber $25 who subscribes, likes, and comments on any of my videos. Okay, um, I'm gonna be focusing on any videos actually this year, not last year. Because last year, I kind of went in a different direction than this year. So any videos from, from 2021, I will be focusing on any comments from any videos from 2021. I'm halfway there, so let's reach the other half soon. Okay, so today's Monday, so today is Mets. I do my Mets on Monday. Okay. So we're going to do, be doing something a little different today, not just mostly about news, but basically how we look so far. So here, 10 Mets takeaways at the 10% of 21. So let's see how they rate. And this is from Anthony DeComo from the Mets. Okay. Okay. So. New York officially, the Mets completed the first 10% of their season with a 4-0 Vic win over the Nationals at City Field on Sunday. Leaning upon some help from the, his defense, Tiwan Walker delivered seven shutout innings and the Mets roughed up Patrick Corbin to claim a winning record by the slimmest of margins. They are 9-8. and eight. Okay, so they're above 500. As that record attests, things haven't always gotten smoothly for the Mets, who endured weather and COVID-19 issues that not only upended their schedule, but also they feel at least affected their consistency. As, it, as if to prove it, they played six straight games for the first time this week and became sharper by the weekend, taking two of three from the Nationals to maintain their perch atop the NL East. The best game, I think, was on Friday with DeGrom, the DeGrominator, lights out. That's it. That's all I got to say. I'm just ready to attack the meat of the schedule, said first baseman Pete Alonzo, who home it in Sunday's win. The start was really tough. Because of the stop-and-go nature of it, it's been not necessarily a true baseball schedule. Whatever we went through, it was kind of tough to get our momentum and have it go continuously. But now I feel like we're at a critical point where as we get into the meat of the season, I'm really excited. Okay, so, there are indeed plenty of measures for the Mets to be content upon reaching the, the season's one-tenth marker. Here are 10 takeaways from the 10%. Number one, we know it's number one. Yes, Jacob deGrom is that good. Says it. deGrom is probably not going to maintain uh, 0.31 ERA for the entire season. But what he showed Friday in delivering statistically the finest outing of his young career was enough to prove that this could be his finest season yet. As mind-boggling as that may be for a two-time National League Cy Young Award winner, it's also important. For all their off-season improvements, these Mets are still dependent upon the ground to succeed. They won't get to where they want to without him at his best. And he is at his best. He had gotten 15 strikeouts and only gave up two hits in a complete game shutout. Not only that, but he, he got two hits. He scored the first, you know, he drove in the first one. The guy could do everything. The only thing I haven't seen him do is steal a base. Probably could do that too. The rest of the rotation is plenty good too. This projected as a strength of the teams heading into the season. And not only because of the grub. Walker's seven shutout innings on Sunday lowered his ERA to 2.14. While Marcus Stroman sits just north of that at 2.25, the 
the Mets have ranked in the top five of the majors in rotation ERA for the most of the month, despite playing all of it without number two starter Carlos Carrasco, who was due back in mid-May. That trend offers evidence that the Mets' early success is sustainable. So I think right now we're doing four-man rotation. The defense is complicated. The Mets were never going to be a great defensive team. They didn't look like one heading into the season, and they proved those projections right with a difficult first month, most notably committing six errors during a three-game sweep at Ribley Field last week. The Mets entered Sunday's play 27th in the majors in defensive runs saved, which is about where they've ended up every year since 2017. But the Mets did offer some glimpses of improvement in Sunday's win. In the third inning, Michael Conforto, who had committed a pair of misplays in a loss the night before, started a 9-4-5 relay to cut down Victor Robles at the third base. In the sixth, center fielder Albert Amora, making his first start of the season, made a sensational leaping grab to save two runs for Walker. Manager Luis Rojas does have ways to improve this unit, mostly by choosing to give Almora in center and Luis Elise Guillaume at third base more starts. But most days, the Mets rely on the offense to be potent and the pitching staff, which enters Sunday's play, ranked second in the majors in strikeout rates to keep the ball out of our play. Said starting third baseman J.D. Davis, I think we'll be just fine as a team. Third base belongs to Davis-ish. Nowhere is that balance between offense and defense more precarious than the third, when Rojas faces a daily decision on whether to start Davis, Guillaume, or Villar. He chose Davis on Sunday, and Davis responded with his fourth home of the Nationals lefty Patrick Corbin since 2019. It's just one of those things that I see the ball well off him, Davis said. I like J.D. Davis. I like Guillaume better, but time will tell who's going to be the consistent third baseman. Earlier this week, Davis committed three of the Mets' six errors in Chicago. He'll need to become a more consistent defender if he wants to continue drawing most of the starts at third. But for now, his bat remains too productive for Ross to move. Ever since he got hit on the hand, I've noticed that he's been having trouble throwing. Brandon Nimmo. What can you say about Brandon Nimmo? He's a beast. Had the Mets acquired George Springer, Jackie Bradley Jr., or some other outfielder this winter, it would have most overtly affected left fielder uh, Dominic Smith, but also would have cut into Dimo's playing time, robbing him of a chance to achieve exactly what he has. Now well established as the Mets' everyday leadoff hitter, Nimmo ranks second in the National League in on-pace percentage. He could challenge for the on-base percentage title if he keeps playing well <clears throat> against left-handed pitches. I've been watching. He gets on base no matter what. Whether he hits or walks, he's on base. Francisco Lindor is human. Yes, he is. The Mets' $341 million man hasn't hit much yet with a merely a 210 on one home run and two extra base hits in 17 games. Lindor singled on a Corbin slider in the fifth inning Sunday for just a second hit off a breaking pitch this season. It's a problem that has dogged Lindor throughout his career with a 231 lifetime average against slides and curves. Even so, it, it's an issue Lindor has been able to overcome in the past. While working through it, he has demonstrated excellent plate discipline and most solidly defense at shortstop. The Mets don't have any concerns over his long-term outlook. Yeah, I have seen him make a lot of good defensive plays. I have nothing against his defense. His offense ain't there. For the price we pay him, he needs to improve his offense. It's still early in the season, so anything can happen. So I'm optimistic. Conforto will be just fine. Quietly, Conforto is batting 290 with four extra base hits over his past nine games after recording just three hits in his first eight. Much of the early narrative has surrounded Conforto's defense, particularly after he misplayed two balls in Saturday's loss. But he also homered in that game, and he began Sunday's excellent relay to cut down Robles at third. 
Once again, the greater sample size here offers plenty of reasons for optimism. He started off pretty slowly, Conforto, and everyone makes mistakes. None of us are perfect. Even DeGrom can make a mistake all over early. But I think he's going to improve. Alonzo is back. Unlike in 2020, Alonzo is once again routinely driving the ball to straightaway center and right field. His solo home run off Corbin on Sunday fell just to the left of the home run apple, giving him 74 for his career, six more than any other major leaguer since his career began in 2019. Alonzo credits it to his ability to choose the proper pitches at which to swing, rather than at more difficult offerings in the strike zone. It's because I'm a little bit more relaxed, Alonzo said, and also I'm sticking to my game plan. I've seen he started off a little... Had a little rocky start, but he has been picking it up. James McCann is who he thought he was. When McCann signed a four-year, $40.6 million contract to be in the Mets' sent catcher, most scouting reports pegged him as a strong defender with an accurate arm who could nurture pitching staff, hit lefties, and every once in a while do some damage against right-handed pitchers as well. Through 17 games, he has been exactly that. All four of McCann's RBIs have come against lefties, while its most significant contribution have occurred behind the plate, throwing out Trevor Story to end last Sunday's win in Denver and guiding Mets pitches to a 3.25 ERA. Edwin Diaz. Edwin Diaz might be a lead again. Outside of one early hiccup in a game the Mets were already losing, Diaz has been routinely unhittable, going 2-for-2 two two in save opportunities with a 2.25 ERA. He has struck out 12 batters in 8 innings, and he continues making 2019 look like the outlying season of his career. The Mets once again have implicit trust in Diaz to nail down what they hope will be many more wins to come. So, he is, uh, has picking it up. Uh, the, the one person that they didn't mention, uh, I think his name was Sean Reed Foley. Uh, the other day, I forget who it was, when they pitched, and he pitched like a couple of innings. And he pitched phenomenally, the three shutout innings. So uh, I, think I think he's a rookie, but I think he's a good prospect. You know, I like what I see from him. Okay. Uh, familiar is familiar. Um, so far, you know, uh, everyone has been doing okay. Not poorly. Some are well. But all in all, the Mets are, are getting there. They're not there yet, but they are getting there. Time will tell. Once they get Thor back and once they get their uh, Carrasco, who's their second starter, right now... They only have four starters, DeGrom, Stroman, Peterson, and Walker. They sent Lucchesi to the other site. So right now they only have four starters. So they need a fifth starter at an extra starter, sixth starter. So time will tell. Again, if you like what you see, give me a big thumbs up. Hit that bell notification so you know my videos come out. And please subscribe. Remember my promo. When I get to 250 subscribers, one random subscriber who comments on any video in 2021 will receive $25. But you must comment so I can see you. Otherwise, I can't see you. You can't. If I can't see you, I can't give it to you. Okay. I will be doing a home remedies video tomorrow. I'm not sure exactly the topic. But I'm sure that I'll do a home remedies video. I thank you. Stay safe. And please, go get vaccinated. You know, the, a lot of people are not getting their second dose. If you don't get your second dose, you're not 100% you know, safe. You're not covered. I thank you, and I will see you tomorrow.